you are in college or you're doing your undergraduate course and you're in hostel or maybe in some other state which is not your homeland and you go back home on a vacation there is a festival there is a annual holiday and you are back home home in the room of your childhood the room the corridor the very house that you grew up in and the moment you enter that space you know you have so many memories coming in in fact you could stand at a corner of the room and probably see yourself a young you maybe a little child in school running in and looking into that mirror combing your hair or you could see yourself smelling the rain as you took your school bag to go to school and these memories suddenly come in and for a moment you go back into the past and this concept has been used so often in movies and novels we all know that flashback so this is a scene that i would like you to keep in mind as we go through jayant mahapatra's poem elsewhere so the very title of the poem elsewhere elsewhere if you take it as an adverb as a verb form it is you know you could use it in sentences like he tried to further his career elsewhere in some other place that is the meaning of elsewhere in some other land now if you take it as a pronoun as a pronoun form you know for example the treasures of this land have all been imported from elsewhere it becomes a place so now let us go into the poem elsewhere in this room of mine the joy of finding oneself chosen by the object of my desire slips from one fear into another so here the po poet immediately the very starting is in this room of mine so let us imagine it to be a physical room the poet enters into a room of his childhood and the moment he enters that room he says there is joy there is joy of finding myself chosen by the object of my desire he is the hero of his story in that past he is dwelling into the past which is a physical childhood room which is also in a figurative sense it is that chapter of the past into which he is going back like wordsworth says the boyhood the youth in which nature was his companion in the same way jayant mahapatra is taking us into his boyhood into his adolescence and the room here is symbolic slips from one fear into another the very saying that you know that he is slipping from one fear into another as we grow up when we are little children there are so many little fears in life you know whether they would have a holiday tomorrow in school these are the things that little children are bothered about would there be a surprise test or would i get to go out to play cricket or will it rain and as they go into adolescence and youth it becomes bigger dreams whether you can pursue your education in some other city whether the love of your life whether a lover would come into view and so on it goes and these fears they are only exchanged for something else no life does not say that this is over the journey is over no every fear is replaced by something else slips from one fear into another the laws that govern us do not see the fantasy of the endings so here he says the laws that govern us what are the laws that govern human life the universal laws like blake's songs of innocence turning into songs of experience these are the laws of the universe and they govern us all and they do not tell us the ending of our fantasies every little child has fantasies of growing up of realizing dreams and none of us know the end of these fantasies none of us know the end of these dreams 
Yes, the man walking down the street knows all about suffering, crying quietly in his cancer. His friends smile in awkward silence. So now he gives a picture of a man who has already got a life sentence, a man who has cancer. He has been told that he will die with cancer or his life has come to an end. He is perhaps having only a little more time on this earth in which he must suffer. And this man knows the end of his fantasies. He knows the end of his dreams. And the poet says that he is crying quietly. He is in his cancer and his friends, they smile in awkward silence. You know how we are taken or transported to a scene where you have a person you love and that person is going through a sickness or that person has got a life sentence in some form so that we know the end to this chapter. And there is an awkwardness among the friends and they smile, they pretend that nothing is going to happen. Whereas everyone is thinking of that ultimate end. So here Jayanta Mahapatra is comparing this scene where the end of that dream is known to the past, to the childhood, where every fantasy is still a story with a continuation. So this, so we can see that there is a going back and forth. There is the past and the present and the future. All three are playing as characters in this poem. Jayanta Mahapatra was the first poet to win the Sahitya Academy Award in, in, for English poetry. He belonged to the trio of A.K. Ramanujan and uh, R. Parthasarathy. So these three poets, we can say Jayanta Mahapatra, R. Parthasarathy and A.K. Ramanujan, all three of them wrote in Indian English. Their syntax, their sensibility, their memories, their very language, the linguistics was all Indian. They used the colonizers language to write about Indian sensibility. They too belong to the post-colonial poets. We can see that uh, initially we know that there is Tagore, Rabindranath Tagore, Toru, Dutt, Sri Aurobindo, Sarojini Naidu. They were all poets who wrote in English and they still had, we could say, the colonial language and they were very much influenced by the colonial English and uh, they wrote about the awakening Indian conscience. They wrote about the powerful patriotism that was required for a free India. Sarojini Naidu wrote about her dream of a post-colonial, of an, of an India that realized her dreams. So we could say that they were awakening the patriotism, the intense patriotism in people, the consciousness, the Indian consciousness in people. Now, after that, coming into our Parthaswarati and uh, our Jayant Mahapatra, we can see that they have gone into that space of modern English poetry, modern Indian English poetry. And here, uh, Jayant Mahapatra has given equal importance to the inner self. It was not only about the outward world that he wrote. He also wrote about the inner self of his own consciousness and his own inner world. He has said in one of his interviews that my inner world is a very real space that I inhabit. It is as real to me as the outer world that I inhabit. So he says, now continuing, if my suffering is elsewhere. The morning laughs softly as it enters the pieces of past time. And I write a song and laugh too, thinking desperately to save the face of the thought I loved. So now he says, my suffering is elsewhere. Now, I have grown. I am a mature man and my suffering lies elsewhere. And yet at the same time, amidst his suffering or amidst the present where he is now living in the songs of experience, he is going back into those songs of innocence. He is going back into his physical childhood room and he says, 
it enters the pieces of past time and i write a song and i laugh i still feel that happiness yet again and i think desperately i think of saving the face of the thought that i loved you know there even young as you are as a student you could still see i mean i believe that every student who is now learning this form you are in still in the songs of innocence you have not yet reached the songs of experience and even young and innocent and beautiful as you are you can still remember a childhood dream now that you are in your adolescence or you are in high school or college you can still think of a little dream that you had as a child a little a beautiful memory and that memory you may try desperately to remember it maybe a memory spent with somebody you loved and you have now lost so many of us would have lost a grandmother a grandfather as you grow up and there is a memory or thought that you shared and when you think you desperately want to save that memory isn't that what we all do when we look at old photos and uh, memories of childhood of old friends and we go back we snatch that time for a for a few minutes we go back into that past world and sometimes these memories can be sad too he says the face of the thought i loved so now here we see the poetic device of personification the thought is given a human form this is one of jaint mahapatra's uh, one of his devices in his poetry he lends a personification or most of the things in his poetry they could be elements in nature they are usually personified and that is why his language his syntax is very alive now he says in this very room i knew my mother pulled her cold shadow from her breast wanting to hide journeys from which she had never recovered so now he speaks about his mother and he says that she had pulled her cold shadow from her breast when you say uh, the mother's breast it is uh, symbolic of the mother's milk of love of human kindness of warmth of protection a mother holds her child to her bosom and she protects and loves her child but here he says cold shadow is what is coming from my mother's heart and she wishes to hide journeys from which she had never recovered so here we see that uh, mahapatra in many of his poems has talked about childhood of his mother his father his grandfather his grandfather they had all belonged to the hindu community and his grandfather had once in order to escape starvation had gone to the missionaries and converted into christianity and that is how their family became christian so mahapatra alludes to his family in most of his poems and here we see that the the mother and the child had a very disturbed relationship they had a cold relationship and the fact that he says she pulled her cold shadow she wanted to hide journeys from which she never recovered this means we can say that you know we feel that the mother has brought her past trauma her own childhood traumas her own growing up trauma that in common language which we call baggage she has brought it into this life she has let her own fears her own desperation her own disappointments her own sad dreams that had been tarnished and destroyed she has brought the shadow of it all into the bringing up of her child that her child is scarred by these images and isn't this a universal truth that so often a parent brings past trauma into the life of the child and the child is affected by it so here he speaks of the relationship between mother and child we also need to remember that jayant mahapatra considered his land odisha 
he belongs to the Oriya community, the Odisha people, and he considered his land to be his mother, his muse. And we can also think, as we think of the word mother, let us bring Odisha also into the context because we have to remember how connected the poet was to his land. He says that I sing of Odisha, I sing for Odisha. So we need to always keep in mind that the homeland was very important for our poet. And my father kept to his strangeness in ignorant desire, smelling the wrinkled sheets in the dark, not knowing what meaning lay in them. So in two poems, to my father and my report card, Jayant Mahapatra shows that he had a very strange relationship with both parents. His father was also very cold and very distant. The filial devotion or love was not evoked in a child. In a child who was hungering for that love from both parents, he saw a distant man. And by the fact that he says, my father kept to his strangeness. His father stayed aloof. He did not show up for the family. He was aloof and he remained in his own cocoon of silence. And he smelled the wrinkled sheets in the dark. When you say wrinkled sheets in the dark, this has a sensual connotation of uh, a bedroom that is spent with someone. And yet, he says, not knowing what meaning lay in them. Perhaps it is a father who has had conjugal relationship with his wife in the privacy of his bedroom. He has hugged maybe his children. As little children, maybe he has hugged them in his bedroom. But he does not know the meaning of that language of love. He has done it or he has passed his life, the physical part of his life, in a monotonous manner, simply committing the act of love without ever feeling the intensity of desire or the meaning of it. So he says it was just meaningless. It was just like, you know, how a person would mindlessly eat or sleep. He has indulged in acts of love also. But none of it has lent meaning or depth to his relationships. So he says that my father just lay in the dark. He did not know what meaning lay in these relationships. The relationship that he had to his wife, to his child. He did not realize that his wife had brought in her past trauma into this relationship. And that she had never recovered from those journeys. And this man who claimed to be her husband was not able to lead her out of these miseries. Neither was he able to guide his child. His child always hungered for that love. And that is why he has written into my father. He writes that my father was always at a distance for me. That that distance could not be covered. It could not be crossed over. That bridge always lay there. So... Some of his major poems are Shadow Space, Life Signs, Whiteness of Bones, Collaboration. We have Indian Summer. In fact, Indian Summer and Hunger are two of his very important poems for, uh, you know, for which he won great renown. And uh, in Hunger, in most of his poems, we can say the themes have been isolation. Uh, we have had... Uh, uh, the you know the loneliness the essence of loneliness then the inner self the inner world and he has always written about the hunger of the people of india and he speaks about different kinds of hunger intellectual hunger hunger of the stomach where a man or woman is starving in his poem hunger he writes you know it's a very poignant scene where he writes that a fisherman is offering a tourist his daughter for a few rupees. He says, you may feel my daughter or you may use my daughter. And he is actually allowing a tourist to exploit his daughter. And Jayanta Mahapatra says that there are two kinds of hunger here. There are different kinds of hunger here. The father who hungers for money, the tourist who hungers for the experience or the act of love without the meaning of it and 
the child the poor child who hungers for food so all the these various phases of human exploitation jayanta mahapatra has written eloquently about exploitation in the indian society about women who are made prostitutes and uh, the slaving hungering population of india they have all featured in his poems he was an symbolic poet we can say he was a surrealist poet so now coming back yeah my room could be a whole world and i don't wish to struggle to keep it i turn the pages the simple shepherd still walk the slopes so he says my room my childhood room or that past that notebook that could be that is still a safe space for me but i don't wish to keep it i don't wish to live in the past this is also a phenomenon that we see that quite often people afraid of the present apprehensive about the future they try to live in the past but mahapatra makes it clear that you cannot do it the past is gone and he says i do not wish to hold on to that past i have enjoyed it i have lived it and the page is turned the book that book of my past it is over and i have turned the page i have come into the present he says i turn the page the simple shepherd still walk the slopes and i feel doors open within me one by one here the mention of the simple shepherd immediately the word shepherd brings to our mind the illusion to the bible and christianity it is christ who is the shepherd and the christian belief that the shepherd leads the flock and we know that mahapatra was a christian by birth he was brought up as a christian though he has his deep belief in hinduism also because that was part of his community and uh, the land of odisha but christianity too has its own uh, you know it is also a part of his being and he says that these thoughts of childhood like our wordsworth when he saw the daffodils and later said that they come into my mind when i am in a pensive mood we see that mahapatra also says that those shepherds that led me once those shepherds or good thoughts or guardian angels or you know we could say those beautiful thoughts they still walk in the slopes of my heart they still have a place in my being and as they walk in my heart they open the doors you know conjure or imagine your mind your heart as a mansion with many doors and as we grow older the experiences of life cause us to close these doors some of these doors in our heart some of these rooms that are private that are closed up they are bolted shut for the public we do not allow the world to get in but he says that when these thoughts of childhood when these shepherds of the previous time those guardian angels walk these slopes i see doors opening within me so the fact that it is within him shows that he is open to new thoughts he is now trying to embrace his present and also be accepting of his future mahapatra was a professor of physics and uh, we can say that he went into literature at the age of 40 that is when he started writing poetry he lived to a long life of 104 years and throughout ever since he started writing poetry he never li- left literature to the very end literature was his companion but so was physics and he says that it is physics that showed me not to write the unnecessary in poetry he says that i go you know he says that physics has allowed him to go to the point to show exactly what he feels so we can say that he almost has a scientific approach to his poetry and he says that uh, you know so those ancestral voices we can say still give him strength those altar grounds 
beyond lie barren although the blood of human sacrifice is spilled still a fantasy i don't have the strength for now here he says the altar grounds are lying barren again altar ground is also alluding to the bible we know the church has the altar and uh, the, there is the biblical belief that god lit the first fire in the altar and the altar fire is never to be put out we also have the altar where you know a human sacrifice or any sacrifice could be conducted that in ancient times we know that human sacrifice was conducted and later on the sacrifice of animals and far later on of uh, you know people go and give maybe money or flowers garlands to the altar you know they present it at the altar and altar also has the figurative meaning that at the altar of wealth i sacrificed my relationship when you put it into that way you know altar becomes uh, also in the figurative sense quite often we use it to mean that for something unworthy we may have given up something that is worthy for at the altar of a temptation a person might give up an education so all these meanings come in here so we have to remember that it is a very symbolic poem and he says this is a fantasy that i still don't have the strength for i don't still do not have the strength to think of that altar ground where so much was sacrificed i don't have the strength for i can only leave my shadow to walk the battlements of this ruined kingdom a sob is merely caught in my throat my body speaks with meaning from the things that could never happen so now we see that he says this battle ground now which is this battle ground he is referring to odisha we know is the modern kalinga once upon a time the great king ashoka had with his army killed off every single person in kalinga and the bodies lay strewn on the slopes of odisha and that is when king ashoka realized that cruelty can never be for an emperor and he became a buddhist he followed the path of ahimsa but here mahapatra is not talking about ashoka he is talking about his ancestors who lay dying writhing in pain half slaughtered on the plains of odisha and he says that even today i cannot think of that past without a sob in my throat so here we see he is comparing his own childhood or we can see that his own past is being brought and at the same time the past of his land odisha is also being brought so we can also see that you know he is talking about an ancestral trauma as well as a personal tragedy we know that as childhood unfolds mahapatra has already told in majority of his poems that he had a difficult childhood he had to endure this distancing from his parents who both suffered themselves and on a level we could say that on a microcosm of his own personal tragedy has the backdrop of or the curtain of the macrocosm of the tragedy of kalinga or odisha so both come into being the inner world the outer world so you need to remember that this is a poem of paradox also there is the inner world the outer world the binary opposite is also there there is the individual trauma and the ancestral trauma so now he says it is my own life agrippa in this room i look at it now it feels that he is coming back again into that physical room and he says i look at it all through the eyes of the present though my sayings my writings my very thoughts are elsewhere i am going back into that past and the word agrippa agrippa is again allusion to greek uh, you know roman uh, history agrippa is known to be the 
right hand man of Augustus, who is the nephew of uh, Julius Caesar, the greatest Roman emperor. Agrippa has said to be a statesman and architect. He has built Rome as well as defended Rome from her enemies. And uh, in a way, this childhood room or this past of happiness, these dreams, these fantasies are serving to him like Agrippa was to Augustus. They are his Agrippa, we can say. that They are what is now protecting him. And quite often, I would say to a student that it is these years of your student life, this, these are the years that are going to lend you strength and integrity for the time that is to come. For there is no doubt that the student or the child is definitely the father of man is greater than the adult. And the adult is always weaker than the child. And it is these childhood memories or strengths that we derive that will come to our aid in later life. In his poem, Summer, Mahapatra talks, he shows a beautiful image of a little child, you know, combing her mother's hair. And the, the very picture shows us how Indian it is, his Indian sensibility. You know, he does not forget even for a moment his Indianness, his Indian history. So here we see the mention of the history of Odisha along with his own personal story. Then, uh, with the eyes of a polite childhood, before time looks out of me and brings back an old tear. So he says, now I look at it all through the eyes of a polite childhood. But we know now that that childhood is now tarnished. Before time looks out of me and brings back an old tear. But that time is now looking into his present. So we see that going back and forth. And there is a tear that is coming from his eye. He knows that that is the past and that childhood has been tarnished yet at the same time he also knows that uh, you know we can also imagine that had Kalinga been whole had that war never happened think of that civilization just think of that past where you could remove that trauma and in a human level wouldn't it be beautiful if we could go back into that past into every childhood and take away those pages where a childhood was tarnished or where a nation. Today we see that there are wars raging. If only those pages could be taken away. Mahapatra tells us how untarnished, how unblemished, how beautiful that image would be. He says it brings back an old tear in which water found itself too old to belong to the austerity of ice. Again and again we see that element of personification of lending life to the natural elements. He says that water has become too old for the austerity of ice. Now this is again very paradoxical. Water changes into ice and ice can also change back into water. That is what we know. But here, the water cannot change back into ice. Here, we have to imagine that ice is the pure form. If ice were the pure form, this water or the tarnishing, the blemishing, the destruction to an extent has happened. It is still water and ice. But you know, the state of matter has changed. Even though it is the same thing, it cannot go back. It cannot go back. The songs of experience cannot become the songs of innocence again. Maybe I look like I have awakened in a strange bed. In this room, I could dupe myself with the thought that the world would always be here. He says that in this my childhood bedroom, I can dupe myself, maybe I can fool myself, I can say that no, I am in a safe space, no bad thoughts can get to me. We have all felt that perhaps, even little children when 
when you go out to play when you come back and you are at your parents uh, you know you are at a dinner table with your parents near you and you feel this is a safe space nothing bad nothing harmful can come to me here so or i pray that it is with a teacher with a parent that every child should feel safe and here mahapatra in his childhood bedroom feels that he can close the door on time he can just close the door on time and imagine himself to be in that past in that beautiful past and here he says and here i go on making my simple mistake as the yearly rains advance and stop that growing up which is just a period where you know when he says yearly rains we know that years are passing by and in mundane activity in simple in a very simple manner we have to remember pope's poem content the man who in his own acres could live a mundane life content on his farm getting food from his farm warmth from the firewood of his house but such a life is so difficult to get it is a lucky person indeed who can have a blissful content life you know the vast majority of human beings will have to endure drastic changes nation civilizations have all undergone changes and but this for him this room of his childhood that is a safe space that is where bad thoughts do not enter unable to cross my long closed room in darkness my feet find the familiar worn stairs stiffening at the stopped clock of pain so childhood when he delves or goes back into that past it is a stopped clock time has been stopped and he is back in that days but he says the familiar worn stairs stiffening at the stopped clock of pain i had told stories of to myself and others during my long life elsewhere his long life lies elsewhere his career lies elsewhere but in his inner world which is now you know again in that paradoxical way it is the childhood room as well as the thoughts of the past and his all that you know a man is made is the various experiences his past memories all that make him the man he is and he says that they still remain with me as my muse for my future writing jayanta mahapatra is one of the foremost of the indian uh, modern poets he did not belong to the bombay group of poets that was his difference from parthasarathy and k ramanujan they were the bombay schooled poets uh, while whereas uh, jayanta mahapatra is thoroughly uh, from odisha in fact he says that you know there is uh, he is totally converted the colonizers language into his own it is completely and truly indian english we can say 